Hi, I'm Gemma, and this is a plastic bag. We're going to find out in this video how you can turn this plastic bag into this handy piece of rope. This video is inspired by a STEM Club's activity. Check out online the STEM Club's website and you'll find loads and loads of other activities that you can try. To make your rope, you're going to need a plastic bag, some scissors, a marker pen, ideally a ruler, but if you can't find a ruler, I'll show you a way of doing it differently as well. So for this activity, we're not going to be using the whole plastic bag. We're going to be cutting it up into strips. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chop off the top and the bottom so we can lay it out. You don't have to be too neat while you're chopping off the top and the bottom. Just get your scissors and get rid of each end. So now we've got a tube of plastic. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to even off one of the ends. So this jagged end I'm going to cut as best I can a straight line to get us started. Hmm, it's pretty good. So for this activity, we're not going to be using the whole plastic bag, we're going to be cutting it into small strips and then using those strips to braid together to create our rope. Now I'm going to be using a measurement of two centimetres, so looking at my ruler, there we are, there's two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go along the side of the plastic bag, I'm going to use my marker pen to make a mark two centimetres all the way up the bag. Once you've done that along the bag, we're going to join those dots up. And then cut down that line to make your first strip. If you don't have a ruler, then you can use two finger widths to measure. So you can either put two fingers and then mark next to it, or if you want to do it a bit cleaner, you can just make a mark on a piece of card and then you can use that to measure your distance. Now I've got three strips. I'm going to take my scissors and carefully just cut the end so that I turn this hoop into one long strip. Do that three times. There we go. So now you've got your three pieces of plastic bag, each the same width and length. How are we going to turn these into a rope? Well, we're going to do something called braiding, which is where you wind the plastic bag pieces in and out of each other to create this, which is a braided rope. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create a knot at the top to hold all of the pieces of plastic bag together. So there we go. I'm going to pull that knot to the top and that should leave me with three strands underneath. Now to create your braid you're going to need to hold this in place. A drawer is a great way of keeping hold of that rope. If you trap the knot in the drawer you should be able to pull out your three strands. As long as you don't pull them too hard they will stay trapped in the drawer. So what you want to do is separate them out into one either side and then one in the middle. And what you're going to do is you're going to do a plait. So we're going to take the right one and put it in the middle, then take the left one and put it in the middle. Okay, I'll do that again for you. Take the right one, put it in the middle, take the left one, put it in the middle. Take the right one, left one. And as you go, try and keep an even pull on the three pieces of plastic bag. So we're not looking to pull them super tight, we're just looking to put a bit of tension in there so that we can create our plait. And what you'll see is that that braid or plait will start to form, creating our rope. So I think we need a rope which is about the distance from your hand to your elbow. So once you've braided that distance, 
What you need to do is take the end and tie a knot just to stop those three bits of plastic bag from untangling and your braid falling apart. So now we've got a piece of rope, let's test it! When we're testing something, you can either use a non-destructive test, and that's where the thing you're testing doesn't get damaged, or you can do a destructive test. The test I'm going to be using is called a tensile test. This test holds our rope vertically and places it under tension by applying a force at the end of the rope. As I'm doing this test from home, I'm having to make use of whatever I can to provide that downward force. I've chosen to use these cans. Before I use them, what I've done is I've put them on a balance just to check if the packaging is what it says on the tin. And actually, there's quite a big difference. Now, if you have some scales at home, you can do this too. If you don't, then as long as you use the tins in the same order each time, it'll be the same downward force each time. For example, if I start by using this tin, then this tin, then this tin, then this tin, for each test, I'll be increasing by the same amount of force each time. You could even label your tins to make this a bit easier. So I'll label this one, two, three, four. This is the test rig that I'm going to be using for our tensile test. I've used a double knot on that door handle to keep the rope in place and I've been really careful when I tied that knot not to pull it too tight because I didn't want to distort the rope before we started the test. You can see there's an arrow that I've drawn and attached to the rope. That's going to help us track the extension of the rope as we increase the downward force. I've put a little mark on a piece of paper behind that arrow and as the arrow moves down we'll be able to track the downward movement by comparing the arrow to the starting point. I'm using a plastic bag on a hook at the bottom of the rope. If you haven't got a hook, a piece of wire or even a coat hanger would do. I'm being really careful not to have feet or have hands in the way. If you're worried about the surface, then you can put a piece of cardboard underneath or a doormat or just anything that's going to stop a scratch from the surface when the bag hits the ground. So I'm going to start the test now. We're looking for signs that the rope is deforming and extending in length or becoming thinner in diameter. See if you can spot the change as it happens. Tin number two. Tin number three. Tin number four. Let's recap. You've just watched a destructive test called a tensile test. And what we did is we placed the rope under tension, vertically hanging it with a mass at the bottom. By clamping the top, placing it under tension, and putting that mass there, we created that extension in the rope as it started to stretch. Now what happened was the rope underwent plastic deformation. And that's when something deforms past the point where it can return. A good way of explaining this is if you think about something being elastic. Elastic deformation is where you can stretch something and it can come back to its original shape. Now what's happened to our rope is it's stretched under tension, but vertically, but it's gone past the point where it could return. Now between you and me, I kind of like breaking stuff, so that was pretty cool. But what's next? There are lots of different ways that you can vary your rope, and you can use that tensile test to see which one creates the stronger material. Now, one of those ways could be to try cutting the plastic bag in a different direction. You could cut it lengthways or crossways and see how the way that the bag's been made alters the strength of the material. You could increase the number of braids by cutting yourself four strips of plastic bag and braiding those together. You could do two. You could even do one. What we've done today, turning this bag into this rope, is called reusing. And that's a method used to make products and materials more sustainable. The other ways that we could have made this plastic bag more sustainable can be listed by using the six R's. So the first one was reuse, and that's what we've done today, where you turn a material or a product into something else. 
The second is rethink. Do we even need to use a plastic bag at all? The third is refuse. So if you don't agree with it, don't buy it, and then eventually people will stop manufacturing it. There's reduce, which is using less of something. Recycling, which is changing the material itself into a different product. And then repairing, so can we fix it and keep it going for longer? So my challenge to you is to have a look around your home and find a product that you think you can make more sustainable. Work through those six R's and see what you come up with at the end. So that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching, thank you for taking part, and don't forget, get online and check out the other STEM Club resources. There are loads of stuff to get involved in.